أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يوم ندعو كل أناس بإمامهم فمن أوتي كتابه بيمينه فأولئك يقرؤون كتابهم ولا يظلمون فتيلا My dear viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته On the occasion of martyrdom of the master of muttaqeen الإمام علي بن أبي طالب عليه السلام We extend our condolences to our master the twelfth imam Al-Imam Al-Mahdi alayhi salam and to the entire Islamic nation on this sad occasion. Also, we seize the opportunity tonight to shed some light on the quality of our leaders and our Imams. The religious authority and religious leadership has far more impact on Muslim individuals than any other issue. The reason is the Muslim individuals acquire their religious viewpoints and ideology as well as jurisprudence from their religious leadership. Therefore, they exert very important and humongous amount of influence on the individuals. Since Muslims are by nature, are religious, therefore the religious leadership play a very important role in their lives in order to keep them adherent to their principles and to their faith and religion. In fact, religious leadership play a very important role in shaping up people's opinion and religious world views. If the religious leader is considered to be open-minded, that will be reflected on his followers. You will see that their, his followers are also open-minded. In the same way, if the religious leader is conservative or hardliner, you will see the followers as well are hardliners and conservatives. Those who kill people and behead people and murder mass number of people, they all get their decree and their order from religious leaders. Their religious leaders have commanded that they carry out such kind of atrocities. And they think that they are adherent to the principle, to the principles of their religion. Therefore, the religious leadership play very important very important role in the Islamic community that goes into the details and as well as the daily lives of every single Muslim individual this important mo point was illustrated in the Holy Quran where the Holy Quran stressed explicitly that whoever follows someone as his leader in the hereafter he has to follow the same ruler and the same religious leader. As the ayah says, يَوْمَ نَدْعُوا كُلَّ أُنَاسٍ بِإِمَامِهِمْ We will force, we will make sure that all people follow, every group of people follow their religious leaders. فَمَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ يَقْرَؤُونَ كِتَابَهُمْ وَلَا يُظْلَمُونَ فَتِيلًا so the religious leadership will make sure which way the followers will go. If the religious re leadership is righteous and pious, then those will be taking their followers to the heaven. As the ayah says, وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا They follow God's order and take their followers to heavens. While those 
who oppose God's order and God's religion, they will take their followers to the hellfire. As the ayah says, وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَدْعُونَ إِلَى النَّارِ Again, two kinds of imams. One that will take to heaven his followers and the other one that takes his followers to the hell fire. Therefore, it is incumbent, it is mandatory that we know the quality of our leaders, the ones that we are proud to follow. And in fact, this is a command of the Prophet, peace be upon him. He has said in a narration that has been quoted unanimously by all Muslim scholars who say that the Prophet, peace be upon him, has said, Man mata wa lam ya'rif imam zamanihi mata mitatan jahiliya. Whoever dies not knowing his religious leader, this person will die like an ignorant, jahili person. Therefore, we should know, we must know and realize the leadership that we are following. Every Muslim should ask himself or herself what kind of leader we are following. Therefore, I will take a few minutes to describe the qualities of the leaders of Ahlul Bayt We are inspired by Ayat al tathir the verse of purification in Surah Al-Ahzab, where the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهِ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمْ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهِّرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا The Mufassireen, the scholars, they say that the cause of revelation was this, that one day the Prophet, peace be upon him, called upon his daughter, Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam and asked her to gather her husband and her children, Hassan and Hussein. Once all four were summoned to the Prophet, the Prophet took a cover and covered them all. And then he said, Allahumma inna haulai ahl bayti wa itrati fa'adhib anhum al-ritsa wa tahirhum tathira. O Lord, these are my household. These are my progeny. Therefore, purify them, cleanse them from any filth. Right after, this ayah was revealed to the Prophet, peace be upon him. Now, the one who narrates this is the wife, the respected wife of the Prophet, Umm Salama, who said that she came also to get inside the cover with the five infallibles. But the Prophet, peace be upon him, did not allow her. In fact, he told her, Innaki ila khair, lakinnaki lasti minhum. You are on the right path, but you are not among the five members of Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam or Ashabul Kisa. Now let's talk about the ayah itself. The, the verse starts with the word innama. Innama in Arabic used for exclusion and restriction. It means it will exclude everybody else except those that are inside the bracket. Meaning that whoever is mentioned in the verse, in this ayah, is included. And the rest are excluded. Therefore, they call it the exclusion tool or the restriction tool, where admitting those in the ayah and omitting the rest of people outside of the ayah. Therefore, the verse says, innama. It says, but. Then it says, yuridullah liyudhib ankum al -ritz. It is God who demands. It is God's will. And now, this God will is, he is applying his hegemonic power and his sovereignty over this cosmic universe making things to happen meaning it has to happen when God demands something or his will is in something that thing has to happen therefore people will say that this is an accomplishment whatever it's in that ayah has been accomplished why because the Almighty says إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُنْ 
فيكون. Whenever God decides for something, the moment that He desires that things takes a place. And here, the Almighty is applying His hegemony in making the members of Ahlul Bayt in such way that the ayah will continue. Then the ayah says, لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّجْسَ إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهِ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ God would cleanse you from filth. Now the scholars describe the filth. They say that there are two kinds of filth. One is the physical one, such as, such as objects like urine, blood, semen, feces. These are all physical filth. And there are also spiritual filth. Sometimes it is a personal characteristics or a trait. For example, greed, hypocrisy, jealousy. These are all kind of spiritual filth. The ayah alludes to those, says, كَذَلِكَ يَجْعَلُ اللَّهُ الرِّجْسَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ لَا يؤمنون. People who do not believe and are disbelievers, God will impose filth on them. This is a spiritual filth. And the second kind of spiritual filth is the behavior, the action, the deed, where the Almighty says, meaning that stay away from filth of worshipping idols. Idol worshipping is considered to be a filth. So there are three categories, a physical one, the physical attributes, and the spiritual attribute, and the actions and deeds. The scholars say that all of the above, A, B, and C, are included in this ayah, meaning that the Almighty is removing all of these dirt and filth from them. Then the ayah says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهِّرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا Cleansing you, purifying you. Number one is removing the filth. Second is filling with purity. This is any process of a cleansing. Number one, the filth, the dirt should be removed. Second, it should be filled with purity and immaculateness. Therefore, the Almighty says that this process is applied to the members of Ahlul, Ahlul Bayt السلام, to keep them immaculate and cleansed. Then the controversial word, Ahlul Bayt. Who are Ahlul Bayt? Some groups say that Ahlul Bayt are his wives. Second groups say it is the progeny and his household, Fatima, Ali ibn Abi Talib, and Hassan and Hussein. And the third group say it is a combination of wives and the household. But if you remember at the beginning of the presentation, we said that the whole story was narrated by Umm Salama, who was the wife of the Prophet. And she, wa she wanted to get inside the cover with them. But the Prophet, peace be upon him, rejected her, asked her to stay away. Meaning that if the wives of the Prophet were included the Prophet would have include, did, included Umm Salama with them, but he did not. Now, they claim that the whole verse came within the sequence of the talk that the Almighty was talking to the wives of the Prophet. Therefore, they should be included. However, when you look at the dictionary, you see that Ahl al-Bayt is applied to so many categories. Even the guests of the house are called Ahlul Bayt. The pets are called Ahlul Bayt. The servants are called Ahlul Bayt. Obviously, the Prophet, peace be upon him, didn't mean all of those groups when he was talking about Ahlul Bayt. So we have to go back and see what the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to call Ahlul Bayt, to use this framework. When we look at history and the books of narrations on both sides, the Shia and the Sunnis, we, say, we see that the Prophet, peace be upon him, exclusively used this terminology, Ahlul Bayt, for his household, 
فاطمة علي بن أبي طالب أن حسن أن حسين It is narrated in the great books of narrations that the Prophet peace be upon him would stand up for six months for a period of six months every single morning calling upon the household of Ali ibn Abi Talib telling them telling them As-salat, as-salat, ahl al-bayt innama yuridu Allah liyudhiba ankum al-ritsa ahl al-bayt wa yutahhirakum tathhira he would call them for the prayers and he would use this terminology only and only for them none of the wives of the Prophet throughout their lives and let's remember that some of those wives were very prolific prolific in in producing so many narrations none of those have claimed that they were part of Ahlul Bayt or members of Ahlul Bayt but the question remains why did the Almighty Allah included this particular statement within the sequence of, of talking about the wives, the wives of, of the Prophet, peace be upon him. The answer, brothers and sisters, is very clear. The Almighty want to test us. We are here in this life to be tested, not to have fun, not to enjoy our life, rather to be tested. As the Almighty says, Alif Lam Meem, Ahasib An Nas, and Yutraku, and Yakulu Amenna, Wahum La Yuftanun. Do people think that they declare and they claim to be faithful, but they, without any test, without any examination, there must be an examination. In the same way that a student go through examinations, the entire humanity goes through examination. And sometimes the answer is not that obvious. You have to search for it. You have to dig for it and find it. Sometimes the students stay all night up without sleeping and reading, studying for their course. Why? Because those, those answers are hard earned. You have to earn them, but, but with difficulty. Therefore, the Almighty has put this as a test for all Muslims. So the Muslims can go back to the Holy Quran, to the words of the Prophet, and check and study carefully to recognize who are Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam was the prime member of Ahlul Bayt, who was an immaculate, a cleansed and infallible member of Ahlul Bayt. Did the companions and those who lived with him knew this fact? According to him, yes, they knew this fact, but unfortunately, they did not follow. As he says, Bala wallah, laqad sami'uha wa wa'awha, walakin haliyat dunya fi a'yunihim waraqahum zibrijuha. They have known all of Ali ibn Abi Talib's quality, but they were searching for this life. We will come back. يا سرور العارفين يا منى المحبين يا أنيس المريدين يا حبيب التوابين يا رازق المقلين يا رجاء المذنبين يا قرة عين العابدين يا منفس عن المكروبين يا مفرج عن المومومين يا إله الأولين والآخرين سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث 
خلصنا من النار يا رب اللهم إني أسألك باسمك يا ربنا يا إلهنا يا سيدنا يا مولانا يا ناصرنا يا حافظنا يا دليلنا يا معيننا يا حبيبنا يا طبيبنا سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب يا رب النبيين والأبرار يا رب الصديقين والأخيار يا رب الجنة والنار يا رب الصغار والكبار يا رب الحبوب والثمار يا رب الأنهار والأشجار يا رب الصحاري والقفار يا رب البراري والبحار يا رب الليل والنهار يا رب الأعلان والأسرار سبحانك يا لا إله إلا أنت الغوث الغوث خلصنا من النار يا رب Welcome back again with the segments of Dua Joshan Al Kabir. In such a great night, this beautiful Dua will be recited collectively among a group of believers who will recite this beautiful Dua with its hundred segments. At the end of the segment or each segment, everybody would say, Subhanaka ya la ilaha illa ant al ghawth al ghawth khallasna min al nari. Ya Rab. Segment number 52, 53, and 54. In segments number 50, 52, the theme is to get rid of poverty, where the Almighty Allah says, or which is said and been conveyed to the Prophet, peace be upon him, through Jibreel. It says, Ya Surur al Arifin, Ya Mun al Muhibbin, Ya Anis al Muridin, Ya Habib al Tawabin. يا رازق المقلين يا رجاء المذنبين يا قرة عين العابدين يا منفس عن المكروبين يا مفرج عن المغمومين يا إله الأولين والآخرين It says in the translation Joy of saints, desire of friends, provider of sustenance to the poor, hope of sinners, coolness of worshippers eye Remover of sufferers' pain, dispeller of the sorrow of the sorrow fall. God of the first and the last generation. The words Ya Surur al Arifin, the joy of those knowledgeable. Arif is a little bit different than Alim. Now many people have their interpretation an explanation of the word Arif, which is rooted from the word Ma'rifah, or knowledge. Today we will be shedding some light on this word, Arif or Ma'rifah, according to the interpretation and narrative of Ahlul Bayt, They say it is the knowledgeable, 
that his knowledge has become in a form of light that floods his heart, his heart. Meaning that he will see this knowledge that he has gained in the form of light that guide him throughout his life. Light is a guiding agent. In a path that you walk, you will use light and darkness in order to see through your way, in order to learn where you going to, and is used as a guide, something that clears away the darkness, so you will end up seeing the path in the way that you should. This is an Arif. An Arif has reached a level that his knowledge has become an, er an, an array or a ray of light inside his heart that is giving him the ability to see his way. As the, the word of the hadith says, اتقوا فراسة المؤمن فإنه ينظر بنور الله Be careful of the ingenuity of the mu'min, the believer, the astuteness of the believer who can see through the light of God. God would give, illuminate this light inside his heart. He will have a lightened heart and through which he can see the future. Therefore, the result of this is more subordination to the Almighty, more piety, more patience with the Almighty, more intertwining with the beauty of mentioning of Allah's name, always being preoccupied with God's name and God's remembrance always remembering the Almighty, coexisting with God, most of the time is obsessing with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ali ibn Abi Talib has a beautiful words. He says, مَا رَأَيْتُ شَيْئًا إِلَّا وَرَأَيْتُ اللَّهَ قَبْلَهُ وَبَعْدَهُ وَمَعَهُ Whenever I see something, I would not see it without first seeing God, second seeing God, and with it I would see God. Meaning that he would see the grace of God, the effect of God, the majesty of God at anything that he looks at. Meaning that he's completely pro preoccupied with the presence of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To such person, anything that comes to him as long as it bears God's satisfaction, will be a joyous moment. Therefore, this word of a prayer says, Ya surur al-'arifin, the joy of those arifin, meaning whatever God has mandated upon them in their life, whether it's a hardship or ease, whether it's elation, happiness, or sorrow and sadness, as long as it is coming from the Almighty, they will have total joy and satisfaction with it. Because this is what their beloved has mandated. This is what their sweetheart wants. That's beautiful words of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam in the Battle of Ashura when he says that, Ridallah ridana ahl al bayt, nasbiru ala bala'ih. The satisfaction of God is our own satisfaction. Whatever He has satisfied for us, that is our own elation and happiness. We will be happy to carry that one. Why? Because they're always in remembrance of Allah. Because their existence has been intertwined with the name of God with remembering and calling the Almighty. As Ali ibn Abi Talib salam says in Dua Kumail, he says, وَجْعَلْ لِسَانِي بِذِكْرِكَ لَهِجَ Always make my tongue obsessed in naming you, in calling upon you. وَقَلْبِي بِحُبِّكَ متيمة. That my heart becomes so obsessed in the love of you. That is the 
Arifin. And that is what the Arif gets to, that he becomes satisfied with whatever God has distant for him, has ordered for him. One day a man came to one of the Imams and tells him, Ibn Rasulullah, to me, fear is more than, I am happier with fear than with security. I am happier with starvation than with full stomach. I am happier with hardship than with being at ease. But the Imam told him, we are different. We Ahlul Bayt are happy with whatever God is satisfied with us. If, if he wants us to be at hardship, that hardship is like a sweet honey to us. If God wants us to be at ease, then again, that thing is a sweet to us and that is desire. So whatever God mandates, that is our pleasure. That's what we embrace and want. And then the next vocabulary or term, Ya Raja al Mudhnibin. The only hope for the sinners is the Almighty. We make mistakes, we commit sins, not to challenge the authority of the Almighty, rather because we have weak personalities. Therefore, the only hope that is in our heart that we will be forgiven is the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we know that He is forgiving if we go back to Him. Ali ibn al Hussein alayhi salam has these beautiful words. He says, Ilahi, lam a'sika heena a'saytuk wa ana birububiyatika jahid. I am not negating your lordship when I made my mistake and sin. Wala bi amrika mustakhif. Wala li uqubatika muta'arraf. I am not challenging your order and your command. Walakin khati'atin aradat wa sawwalat nafsi. Because I seized the opportunity and I was weak in personality, weak in spirit. That's why I carried that one. So the only hope that I am left with is you and your forgiving. The next segment is segment number 53, which is to cultivate love. And the word, Ya Hafidhana, Ya Dalilana, in the segment number 353, it says, Ya ilahana, ya sayyidana, ya maulana, ya nasarana, ya hafidhana. Oh, the protector. God is the best protector. He protects us from so many dangers. If you look around you, brothers and sisters, you will see danger is so imminent to us. Even when you are sleeping in, in your bedroom. Do you know how many or oh, how much of dangerous waves the body receives that could be detrimental to our health and can kill us. But the, with the grace of God, those are all prevented. The minute that you step outside of your home, there are so many dangers that all become imminent to us. But with the protection and the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we survive all those challenges. As the Almighty says, فَاللَّهُ خَيْرٌ حَافِظًا وَهُوَ أَرْحَمَ الرَّاحِمِينَ He is the best protector. He is the one, he would protect us from imminent dangers. Why? Because he is the most benevolent of all benevolent entities. He is فَاللَّهُ خَيْرٌ حَافِظًا وَهُوَ أَرْحَمَ الرَّاحِمِينَ He is the most merciful of all those who are benevolent. Then segment number 54 is to befriend God, where it says, Ya Rabb al Nabiyyina wal Abrar, Ya Rabb al Siddiqina wal Akhyar, Ya Rabb al Jannati wal Nar, Ya Rabb al Sigari wal Kibar. He is our Lord, the Lord of the sinful and the Lord of the pious. He befriends everyone. His Mercy is exerted to everyone, regardless of their faith, regardless of their creed, whether bad or good, the grace of God containing everyone. Whether, whether we know him or we ignore him, God send us, emanate his grace 
to everyone. As the, as the dua says, يَا مَنْ يُعْطِي مَنْ سَأَلَهُ يَا مَنْ يُعْطِي مَنْ لَمْ يَسْأَلْهُ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَعْرِفْهُ تَحَنُّنًا مِنْهُ وَرَحْمًا God would give those who ask him, plead with him. And also God gives those who do not even know him. There are people that are agnostic, atheist. They negate him. Yet God sent his sustenance and their nourishment to them without asking for any compensation, for any reciprocation of good. Why? Because he is the Lord, he is the custodian of everyone. Ya Rabb al-Sagari wal-Kibar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this holy month contain us and engulf us in his mercy. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Avoid every action which the doer likes for his own self but dislikes for the Muslims in general. Avoid every action which is performed in secret and from which shame is felt in the open. Also avoid that action about which if the doer is questioned he himself regards it bad or offers excuses for it. Do not expose your honor to be treated as the subject of the people's discussion. Do not relate to the people all that you hear, for that would amount to falsehood. Do not contest all that the people relate to you, for that would mean ignorance. Kill your anger and forgive when you have power to punish. Show forbearance in the moment of rage and pardon in spite of authority. The eventual end will then be in your favor. Seek good out of every favor that Allah has bestowed on you and do not waste any favor of Allah over you. The effect of Allah's favor over you should be visible on you.